Yo, what is up, everybody? It's Jay the Great here. Welcome back to another Borto spoiler leak discussion. As you can tell, the title this is going to be spoilers for Chapter Five. So, spoiler alert, of course. Spoiler warning ahead. Um, it seems like you guys have enjoyed the previous spoiler discussions, and I really appreciate the support. And of course, hit the like button and the subscribe button if you're new. If you do enjoy the content, it's really appreciated and it really does help. So, thank you for all the support lately on the videos. But uh, here we are on Twitter or X and this user Donut has posted the raw scans but he seems to have translated them as well so this is the first page um, he says credit goes to Scanpia so shout out to Scanpia as well for posting the raw scans and I believe that he means translations all credit goes to okay so this person did all the work so he's just reposting I'm assuming either way shout out to both these individuals so we're going to discuss Power scaling and narrative analysis, of course, this isn't the official translation like I always say, so take it with a grain of salt. But I would say this guy does seem legitimate. Uh, he has quite a bit of followers, so I'm assuming the, tra the translations and the raw scans he posts are legitimate for the most part. But again, take it with a grain of salt. This isn't the official translation, and this is a spoiler discussion. I will do an official review when the actual chapter comes out in about two days. But let's get straight to it. So we have the cover title here. Sasuke is on the front of it this time, allowing us to imply that he will most likely be a heavy emphasis in this chapter. That's a pretty easy deduction to make here. Um, so the translation says, even, even doubting himself, what he believes is after the big change, which I would imply means a plot twist, what happened between Boruto and Sasuke? Question mark. Right? So it seems from this title that we are most likely going to get an explanation of what happened immediately after the events of the plot twist. That's what I am implying, at least. So we get this title, pretty cool. See Sasuke here, and hopefully we get more insight on what happened to him, because as we all know in the previous chapter, he was shown at the very end of the chapter uh, restrained in what appears to be a, a Tentel's tree, and he seemed to be restrained, and Morto seemed to be trying to figure out how to save him. Let's go on to the next. Uh, I think the whole chapter was posted by this guy. Let's see. Pretty much. So we're going to go page by page and see what we can uh, extrapolate here. So we jump here. Page two. All right. Pant, pant, pant. So he's he seems to be fatigued here. All right. Let's send it here. Let's rest for a little. So it seems they're training here. Um, Sasuke and Boruto. And this seems to be a younger Boruto. So maybe this is a flashback. He does seem younger. At least for my eye here. He has long hair, so it seems like some time has passed since the plot twist events as well. So this just shows what appears to be a training session between Boruto and Sasuke. Cool stuff. Let's go on to the next page. Page 3. Okay, it's translated here. Let's click on the entire thing to get a better view here. Alright. says, Sasuke, now I mean master. How am I a Chiha style? Don't you think I'm already mastering it? Yeah, and this year, I think I was able to teach you most of my technique and styles. So that's, that implies that around a year has passed, I'm assuming, since the plot twist events have taken place. And he's been teaching him his techniques and styles. And Sasuke iterates that it seems he's lo he's learned most of them. Uh, Boruto has, rather. Uh, hold on, Master, you have to be joking. I was just a little cocky to say it. Train me more from now on, too. Do you think the look on this face is joking? Okay. They're having a discussion about Borto's progress. And Sasuke seems to be happy with it. I mean, to say that the guy has learned the majority of his techniques and his style in a year is quite impressive. That just shows the prodigal figure that Borto is, right? So that, that's a, it's a very telling right there. So let's continue on to the next. All right, page four. It doesn't look like you are, but thinking back, I've never, I think I never heard a joke from you. You got good talent and is quick and is quick at learning things in general. A genius. You got everything in your mind, right? So I got nothing else to teach you. Really, very, very interesting. It's further uh, reinforcing that he is a prodigal figure, uh, master. But I don't understand. It doesn't mean your training is over. You have to keep on going. Sophisticate your mental and techniques. It all depends on you. How much you can master what I taught you. You're like Naruto. Interesting. Very high praise. Sasuke obviously heavily respects Naruto and. You know, he, he draws a parallel there. It's very, very, very impressive and high praise from Sasuke. So essentially, he's implying here, though, that development-wise, he has the techniques 
under his control, but Sasuke now says you have to refine those techniques and become even more graceful in their execution. Right? That's basically what he's saying to him. But in a way, he is saying, yeah, you're, you, you've, you've progressed very well, and you certainly are a prodigal figure. You know, he says it himself. You know, you got good talent or quick out learning things, implying a high IQ. You know, his his grandfather had a very high IQ, and even Naruto to an extent. He didn't take very long to learn things either. You know, so very high praise, and for it just further illustrates Boruto's greatness. On to the next page, though. Page five. The guy who corrected me when I stepped on the wrong path. You have eyes like him about who you are. It doesn't really matter right now. I think I get why. Sarada told me to save you. Something is happening. Something that can only be solved from you and Sarada. That's what my feelings are telling me. That's why I trained you. Keep in mind, folks, this isn't an official translation. So grammatically, obviously, these aren't written the best. But still, shout out to uh, Dona and the other guy for these translations and these scans. So they're discussing... Uh, the plot twist event, Sasuke says that the feeling I have is that uh, Sarada and Borto are going to be the ones to save uh, the, you know, the shinobi world. And uh, Sasuke is iterating that to Borto, trying to explain to him what's going through his mind, actually being an individual that was susceptible to Ida's omnipotence, as we all know. But that was overrided by his love for Sarada, right? As we all know, he was overtaken by it, but as soon as Sarada sort of pleaded with him that it, it was all a fantasy. He believed her, and the omnipotence kind of lost its strength and lost its hold on him, so to speak, the Shinjutsu, rather. So that's what we got here. Damn, Uchiha, you how dare you got my eyes. Interesting. Uh, what are you doing, Boruto? Hurry, run. I can't leave my master. What are you saying? All right, so this seems definitely to be a prequel because, as we all know, in Chapter 3 and 4, we see Boruto have utter domination over Code. Implying at this point in time, he still isn't at that level to be able to go against someone of Code's caliber. And as we all know, Code with no limiters is above Jigen. And Jigen was the same individual that whipped Naruto and Sasuke pretty badly uh, in Boruto uh, previously. So this is most likely a prequel to the events we see in Chapter 4, rather. So uh, Sasuke is basically telling him to run. right? He says, hurry, run. And Boruto iterates, I'm not leaving you, you're my master, I got your back, right? So that's what's telling to me here, implying that Sasuke still sees himself as the superior one when comparing him and Boruto at this point in time, right? Again, this seems to be at least a year or two before the events we see in chapter 3 and 4, right? So continue on, though. Very telling chapter indeed. Page 7, listen, there's no way we can win against this guy for now, so run, no matter what, survive, master every aspect I taught you. If so, there should be no one that can stand against you. I'll leave Sarada to you, Boruto. Interesting. So Sasuke is saying, hey, just let me be the, the sacrificial lamb here, so to speak, and you just go do what you got to do. right? So he's basically telling him, move on, I'll fight Code off for as long as I can. Um, you know, that's what a master does. That's what masters do, right? So, very telling. All right, page eight, die, master. Okay, so Borto is watching Code fight Sasuke here. Sasuke seems to be going in with a, a lightning variation technique. Lightning is cloaking his sword, and he is attempting to execute an attack upon Code, and there appears to be Tento clones behind him as well, behind Code. All right, let's see how this fight goes. We get some scaling for Sasuke here, actually. Been been wondering what how powerful he is. Page 9 and 10, no text. All right, let's take a look at what happens, though. All right, so this is page... Uh, let's see here. Sorry, folks, it's loading up. Let me look again. All right, so we see what happened here. It shows the sort of tree sprout, I believe. And then it goes on to restrain Sasuke, right? Like how we see him at the end of chapter 4. Okay. So that's how I'm assuming that battle concluded with Sasuke's restrainment. Okay. Continue on. Page 11. Leave it to me, Sasuke. Nah, master. Page 12. No text. Okay. Let's go on here. All right, we see uh, we see Borto would appear to take Sasuke's sword, sort of to defend his mentor's honor. Now that his mentor has been restrained and disabled via the chakra tree, the Tentel's tree, he goes on to take the sword and say, "I will defend your honor. Leave it to me." Right, so kind of paying homage to his mentor. 
Sorry about that, folks. Go on and look here. All right, so this appears to be now. He looks older here, right? So maybe he was reminiscing on the events. And Kishimoto used that reminiscing for us to get some context on what has taken place, right? So well done. Well done by Kishimoto here. All right, let's go to the next page, folks. Konoamaru this way. Are you all right, guys? Interesting. Konoamaru is here. All right. So it's jumping back to Konoha, what it, what it seems to be. Konoamaru is here. They are studying uh, another tree where someone else is being restrained. I can't tell who that is from here. Probably a fellow shinobi from the leaf. So they're kind of trying to deduce what's going on here. Konoamaru is finally making an appearance for the first time in a while, if I'm not mistaken. All right. She saved a mother and a child. That was late. That's what I heard. Mogi. Oh, okay. So this appears to be one of the uh, younger shinobi in the leaf. I believe I'm, I remember her. It's been a while since I've seen or heard of her. But all right. So that's the person who was restrained by the tree. Page 15. I won't forgive them. Code and Jubi. It's obvious, isn't it? I won't forgive them too. It doesn't mean Mogi died. We're going to find a way and save her with the hands of us as friends. All right, so they're deducing that she's not dead, but rather just disabled and restrained at the moment. Um, that's what the deductions that Choji, Shikai, Konoamaru, and etc. are making uh, in this panel here. All right. Interesting. Now we jumped back to these uh, Shinju, or whatever they were called specifically. It, it seems to be one of them here. The kids of Inoshika Cho and Saratoba Konamaru, their despair and anger is what I feel. Interesting. So it seems that there seems to be some sort of synergy between this clone of Moyogi and Moyogi herself. So it seems the feelings that are felt in a certain immediate radius of the tree are also felt by the clone. Very interesting. So not only do they probably have their abilities, I'm assuming, amplified because of Tentel's Chakra, but they also feel the feelings of those in close proximity to the original who is restrained within the tree. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. That's the deduction I make here. Nice. Page 17, that's the proof of your sensitivity growing. We're biologically one, but Matt Suri, the feeling you felt seems to be only inside you. You mean, okay, let me continue on. You mean we are a single existence as a Shinju, but also in a unique state, having our own consciousness, Boruto and Kowalki. The purpose of eating them as an Otsuki and evolving doesn't change. Regarding that right now, for you guys here, I'll declare one thing. Okay, so he goes on to explain that despite having the, the, the feelings of the original that's restrained by the tree, they still have their own respective consciousness, right? This was further elaborated in the previous chapter when we were introduced to the Shinju. They go on to explain how they have their own ego and they're not as primal as the typical Tento clones that we saw in Chapter 1 of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. Very interesting. So they have that uh, sentient consciousness on top of being able to feel what uh, you know the, the individuals uh, that are within the radius of the original uh, person are feeling. So it's very, very interesting. Very interesting detail. I don't know why I feel like this is probably a desire from the instinct, so that's why I think it's important. Naruto Uzumaki, I'm thinking of eating him. Interesting. So they're discussing Naruto Uzumaki. Okay. And it shows this uh, Shinju discussing with this other Shinju here. Very interesting. All right, very telling, very telling. Now it jumps to who appears to be Ida. What these guys, Uzumaki Naruto, why? He's not Natsuki, that's right. But we are we are already a Shinju and is evol and is evolving in a different way. It seems like the instinct moving us changing too. Okay, so again the grammar isn't the best, but again, this is a rough translation. Uh, it seems there be it seems that they are saying that because that they are because they are already Shinju, the instincts are different now because they're not the sentient ten tail clones like the ones we see in chapter one. And it seems they are saying Naruto actually is a good target despite not being an Otsuki like Boruto or, or Kawaki, for example. So they're targeting him. Um, very interesting indeed. But we do see Ida here. It appears Ida is uh, here as well. Uh, we see the other Shinjus here discussing. And that appears to be Damon, if I'm not mistaken, here in the bottom right corner, I think. Let's continue on and see. Yes, it's Damon. Okay. 
Page 20, follow your instincts, listen to the voice inside you, then you should be able to see the target each of you got. Hey sister, what happened? Following your instincts, the one who I imagined was him. Him, okay. Alright, so it seems perhaps they mean Damon by him, in quotations here. You could perhaps they're targeting him. Very interesting. Okay. All right. Page 21. Sorry, Toby Kunoamaru. Maybe I want to eat him. That's a good choice. Matsuri, I feel your identity. Jura, I only have one question in my mind about us. Who are we? Interesting. So this is Matsuri, I'm assuming. Jura, I'm assuming, is the Sasuke lookalike, I think, if I'm correct. Um, so they're kind of discussing who they're targeting here. One wants Konomaru, another iterated they wanted Naruto, um, I believe. And it seems that Damon is a implied target as well, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, page 22, it's reasonable, but it's also something that we don't need to care. It's like the pain when you grow, something that occurs when, you, when, you're per, when your personality grows. It's a waste to think about it. What you need to do is important. The instinct will tell you who your target is. Hidari, that is it's probably from Sasuke. Okay. Your identity. Okay. Again, these are rough translations. Um, obviously, we'll get more clear translations on the 20th when Viz drops the official translation. But uh, I think Hidari Sasuke then, right? The Sasuke lookalike. Okay. So they're all discussing that they should listen to their instincts rather than their sentient consciousness, right? Which, again, they iterated in the previous chapter they weren't happy about. They're actually upset and disappointed that they have their own consciousness because it kind of goes against their instincts, right? The instincts of the Ten Tails, it seems like. So very interesting stuff. All right, page 23. The people who turn into a tree for, uh, being eaten from a claw grime, their chakra gave, gave birth to these guys. Uh, standing up and walking. Okay. I'm watching Ida. I got it. My target is you. So Ida's a target. Okay. His target, I'm assuming. Interesting. They seem to be seeing each other, I believe. Let me see. Go to the next page here. Okay. So they're having an interaction here. Interesting. She seems to be kind of shocked. A little shocked by his appearance. And by the fact that he's now in her proximity. Page 25. Hey, are you alright? Yuck. Senragon, I see Uchiha Sarada. My target is Uchiha Sarada. Okay. Let's see here what's taking place. Sorry for the lag, folks. Alright, so Damon and Ida discussing. Okay, next page here. And I believe he is iterating that Sarda is his target. I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, so this appears to be, uh, the previous page rather, appears to be possibly in her consciousness where she's seeing uh, that Shinju. I'm assuming. Seems to be the case. Here, I mean. Perhaps in her consciousness they're having some sort of mental communication or something like that. So it seems to be perceived here. Moving on to the next. All right. Page 27, page 28. Good choice. Okay, so we see a motto here, what it appears to be. What is it? Kakekun, Borto came back. It's been three years since he left. It seems like it. I also heard he protected the Hidden Leaf from Ko's ambush. Yes, but he is still chased from the Hidden Leaf. Okay. So it jumps to a motto and Sumere, I believe that is. Okay, they're discussing Borto and his whereabouts and what's taken place uh, recently. Very interesting. He went from the leader. That's an he went for the leader. That's an obvious result. I've added the data of Akabi and Kawaki's restored karma. Kawaki just has to engrave the karma to a new clone and the girl. Okay, where was I at? Uh, we'll be back. You're going easy. Aren't you in trouble if Borto gets killed? For your daughter, you were waiting him for him to come back, right? I let him escape from Kara, teamed up with Kashi and Koji in order to defeat Ishiki. Interesting. Okay, I've added to the data of Akabi to Kawaki's restored karma. It seems that despite the karma already being put upon 
Kawaki, Amato could still modify it. He says, I've added data of Akibi to Kawaki's restored karma. Kawaki just has to engrave the karma to a new clone, and the girl will be back. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting revelation there. That just shows Amato's genius. I mean, the guy made cyborgs relative to Sasuke and Naruto, so I mean... <laughs> To some extent, it's extremely impressive. I'm not surprised what this guy's capable of at this point. Nothing really surprises me now. I'm sure most of you guys can relate with that one. Uh, page 30. After Ishiki died, I put my daughter's data when regenerating Boruto's karma that disappeared. To bring back someone's soul, there's no other way uh, other than resurrecting it with the karma. That's why I need Boruto. Isn't that what you want to say, Kai-kun? kai, -kun? kai -kun, rather. Speaking about Kawaki-kun, who has a karma... His body is a scientific ninja tool. But when and who modified his body like that, the point is nobody knows about it. The fact is that the body is obviously modified from my hands. All right, so perhaps he's hiding something here by saying that no one knows about it. And perhaps he's implying that he has more control over these karmas than, than meets the eye. It's a very uh, interesting possible foreshadowing right there. Very, very, very possible foreshadowing that just took place here. Again, the motto is a genius. He is a genius after all. Page 31. Why? How can you know that? It can only be done by me. There are signs I can see that is done for me in many places. It's my instinct as a scientist. Like how artists leaves proves that the job is from them. The same that could be said to the karma. I can distinguish it with the look if it was done by me. Somewhere, somehow Kawaki has it in his hand. The special karma that I put a kebi inside. Okay. So he's he's basically indicating that despite him replicating synthetically the karma, there are distinct traits that make it indicative that he made the karma and that it's not an organic karma. It's basically what he's saying. And because he is such a, a prolific scientist, he can just, from his very eye, deduce whether or not the karma was made by his hand. Very interesting. It just further implies to me that he has some sort of motive here. Obviously, his daughter is of, very, is of great importance to him enough for him to work with the leaf to deal with Ishiki. Um, so yeah, to just take that with a, with a grain of salt, you know, take what, what he's saying as some sort of foreshadowing. That's how I perceive it at least. Um, uh, perhaps he has some more uh, tricks up his sleeve in case Kawaki doesn't bend to his will, for example, and uh, at least willfully. Page 32. There are controversy in my memory, but with the proofs we have in front of us, the answer is obvious. Probably part of my memory is overwritten. That's the only conclusion I can come up with. First of all, memories are just a vague phantom. For me as a scientist, there's nothing that beats actual proofs. Interesting. So this sort of implies to us, the reader, that Amato is suspicious of the omnipotent jutsu. Obviously, he's not deducing exactly what did it, but he is suspicious that something, in fact, did warp his memories, possibly, and that nothing beats actual physical blatant proof. Right? As we all know, even in the real world, the scientific method is very dependent upon experiments and results. Right? Hypotheses are just mere hypotheses. Right? But actual results via experimentation gives you more blatant proof and more solid proof right? to reinforce your claims. So it's basically that's the conclusion he's coming to here. And because of his high intelligence, he's able to deduce that something just isn't right even within his own mind. He's aware of the very deception that probably took place within his very own mind, which is actually very impressive. Quite the intellectual feat, right? So, And then like Sasuke, it wasn't due to love or due to feelings for their daughter. This was just pure intelligence, right? So it's very, very impressive that he did that. Page 33, I don't know who did it, but I can clearly say this. What matters for me is the karma for my daughter, and the one who has it is not bored to book Kawaki. Page 34, the conversation. Uh, how do you take it, Shikamaru? Amato said that. Though he is affected by omnipotence, he recognizes that his memories are written, being have, uh, having actual proofs. Okay, interesting. So it, it seems. Let's see, we see Sai here, and they're learning of what he has said, and they're asking Shikamaru his opinion on it. Um, you know, the the fact that Amato uh, says that his memory could have been possibly overwritten. Let's see what that what this entails of. Let's see what that results in, actually. Page 35, impossible. Even if someone sees a family photo with boards on it, people say Kawaki is the seventh son and no one doubts it. Everyone believes in their own memory, no matter 
uh, how much proof we have. If you have a Chris memory, no one will usually doubt it. Yeah, usually, but Papa did. Interesting. So Sumire and Asar are discussing. Um, so Sumire is basically re reiterating that despite these physical proofs, people tend to default to their own memory as the holy truth, right? So Sumire is kind of iterating that despite Amato's suspicions, it's going to be hard to prove to the others that uh, their memories could have been possibly warped by some other outside force, right? And that seems to be the case. Shikamaru doesn't want to even listen to it. Uh, Sai and the others in Konoha aren't willing to listen to Sarda, which has been displayed several times in to Blue Vortex already. So, very interesting. All right. We go to chapter 30, uh, page 36, rather. Sasuke and I, my master, trusted me. Okay. So, it jumps to Boruto here. Seems that he has made his appearance. Okay. All right, we're on page 36. Lost my uh, location for a second. All right, so we saw him, uh, Boruto make his appearance. Doubting his memories, he used his life to save me. All right, so he seems to be uh, revealing to Sarada what took place with Sasuke to Sarada. Uh, also for you, Sarada. Interesting. It seems he's going on to hug Sarada. Or Sarada hugged him, rather, it seems like, actually. No text. Interesting. Sarada clearly has missed Boruto, been gone that, uh, several years now. You're late, stupid Boruto. They still seem to have that dichotomy between each other that we saw early in Boruto. Feel good moment, right? Page 41. Sorry, I'm now home. The hug is a proof of memories that never changes. Boruto's back with the, with the behalf of his master. All right, so it appears that's where the conclusion seems to be. All right, and there you guys have it. That's the spoiler rough translation of Chapter 5, Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. Pretty solid chapter. It was obviously sort of a revealment chapter for us, and as I'm sure many of you can relate, we're all wondering, you know, I was wondering what happened to Sasuke and what the context was behind his current situation and why he was restrained by the tree that he's currently being restrained by so we got a backstory to that and we got a sort of flashback moment through boruto's reminiscing where we get an explanation of why sasuke is in the current situation that he is in uh, obviously boruto has greatly developed since then right at that point in time sasuke deduced that boruto was not ready to go against code and then in the last couple chapters which was a couple years later from that point in time, Boruto thoroughly and quite easily defeated Code, right? The Code had to retreat and go somewhere else because he was blatantly inferior to base Boruto. Boruto didn't use Sage Mode. He didn't use Flying Rising. He didn't use Karma. He simply just took care of Code with a single Rasengan derivative, right? There was Sengan Uzuhiko. So very impressive stuff by Boruto. Like, and like Sasuke said, which is just further reinforced, Boruto is a prodigal figure. He's a genius, and he learns things very quickly, right? He evolves very, very quickly, and all of these sort of empirical pieces of evidence just further reinforce that very fact, right? So the guy is a prodigy. It's very, very obvious that he's certainly his father's son, and he's certainly his grandfather's grandson. He's a prodigal figure. Uh, as far as the chapter, it was certainly pretty, pretty well done. Uh, you know, we got some revelations also with the Shinju. They have... Uh, targeted the next victims they hope to have to consume or get into the into the chakra tree so to speak right targets include sarada they include konomaru which is an interesting character i don't really see why they have any interest with him, with him. he doesn't seem very powerful and has never been displayed to be so it's kind of bizarre that he's a target uh, maybe they're doing that just for more character development on the writer's part which makes sense i guess uh, we also have Naruto being a target as well, which is very interesting as well. Another revelation we get with the Shinju is that they could feel the feelings of the individuals that are within a certain radius of the original that they are cloned to be that are being restrained by the tree, like Moegi, for example, right? She was in close proximity to, Ko to Konoamaru and company, so her clone, the Tentel clone Shinju, felt the feelings of those people that were kind of mourning her current situation, right? So that's a telling sort of aspect of the Shinju as well. 
right? So we get a further explanation of what these Shinju are and how they function. So they could feel the feelings of people in close proximity to the original that's being restrained by the tree, right? They also have their own consciousness, which is actually explained in the previous chapter and described as ego, right? Which they aren't fond of. And then they have their, instinct, their instinctual urges, similar to the primal Tentog clones we see in the earlier chapters of Two Blue Vortex. Right? They even go on to say, ignore your consciousness, ignore your ego, stick to the instincts that we have. Right? That's what one of the uh, Sinju say to the other Sinju. Stick to the instinctual urges we have to make the Tentog goals come to fruition, right? to gain more power, to, to, am to amass more chakra and more power. Right, so it's a very interesting revelation, and it just further explains why the Shinju iterated in the first place in the previous chapter, why ego was a bad thing for them. They didn't want consciousness. They wanted to be primal, to pay homage and listen to the desires of the Tentel itself. All right, so it's very, very revealing, very revealing, very interesting how these Shinju sort of function. Right. Another interesting moment was Ida and the Shinju that she had some sort of interaction with. Right. It seems like it's possible, now I'm not sure if this is the case, that these Shinju aren't susceptible to Ida's sort of charm hacks ability, right? It seems like they're not susceptible to it, possibly because the Tentels could be described as having similar DNA properties to a Otsutsuki, right? As we know, Otsutsukis are immune to it, so possibly the Shinju as well have some sort of immunity to it. Uh, if they do have Shinjutsu, it just makes further sense, right? Shinjutsu or powers that Sutsukis tend to have, specifically Shibai, right, the founder of Shinjutsu. So it makes sense why the Shinju possibly are immune to the hacks abilities of Aida and possibly even Damien, right, with him being able to reflect intent. So he, they might be, it seems they are immune to that from that interaction. Again, it didn't seem like it was a physical interaction, but rather a sort of astral plane interaction, but hopefully we get more on that as time comes. I would deduce that they're probably immune to her and Damon's abilities. So it's actually pretty telling, just further illustrates their strength in their ability, right? In the previous chapter, not even Borto could contend with them. Both Code and Borto seemed to be at their mercy, and Borto was forced to retreat back to base with Koji Kashi. All right, so overall, great chapter. Lots of revelations. I will read the official translation, of course, and make a review on that ASAP as well. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, of course, hit that like button, get this Get this video to a high amount of likes, and I'll continue with my leak discussions. It does seem like you guys enjoy, and I really appreciate the support. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on this chapter and what's to come? What are your theories of, of what is to come based on the extrapolations we can make and the empirical evidence we do have? All those things, make sure to leave them down below. I do always read your comments and appreciate your thoughts, and I'll catch you in the next video, folks. This is Jay the Gray signing out. Stay classy.